I'm Naja Hall, family life coach and founder of Blended in Black. Much of what I focus on is conflict resolution and healing past traumas. Often when I see clients, they come to me with some sort of drama or toxicity and it's up to me to help them sort things out. Here are some of the most common issues and best practices on how to solve them. If you are in a high conflict situation with the co-parent or step-parent in your life, the children are the ones that are going to feel it the most. If you are a custodial mother and you are sending your child to their other home to be with their father and his partner, and this child does not see unity from you, you're asking for it. You're showing them that it's okay to live in chaos. You're showing them that you just don't know how to resolve conflict. You're showing them that they are not important enough for you to just put on a happy face and be cool with the other parent. What can you do to fix this? Number one, try to forge a relationship based on boundaries and respect with the other household. Give respect, set boundaries, don't ask too many questions, don't be imposing. I know it's your child and um, they are with their other parent, they are with their father, so they're in good hands. There's no need to call and check on them a million times a day. And one thing I'll say this is to biological mothers and stepmothers, you are the example of what your child sees in femininity and nurturing and being soft and someone taking care of them. If they see you warring, then obviously that's gonna have long-term effects on this child. Number one, why didn't my parents care enough about me to just get along? Why couldn't they put on a happy face? Why couldn't daddy and his wife and mommy and her husband attend my kindergarten, uh, middle school, high school graduation together? What, why not? So that's one thing I want you to think about. Also, if you are a woman, like me, for example, if you know, I wouldn't send my children, I would not feel comfortable sending my children over to, over to another household where there's a woman of the house that I did not have a relationship with. We don't have to be friends. As a matter of fact, I would encourage biological mothers and stepmothers to become friends per se, because with friendship comes responsibility. However, if I can't pick up the phone and call you, um, or if you can't call me if there's a concern, um, especially of a feminine nature with my children, then what does that make me? If you cannot get over yourself enough, and you, and if you're one of these ladies out there that's saying, "Well, they're at their dad's house. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to," uh, I know she cannot call me. And I've had clients to sit on my couch and say that, "Well, I, I'm not going to talk to that woman." You're not going to talk to the woman that's bathing, feeding your child, combing their hair, and nurturing them. Now we all know dad's role in the house, but if dad has a woman in his life, she's doing these things for your children. Why in the world would you not want to have some sort of connection with her? I've had mothers, biological mothers, to tell me, um, if something happens with the child, then she needs to tell the father and he needs to tell me. I'll say, well, what if, what if she's not available? What if, what if, I'm sorry, what if he's not available? Oh, well, they'll tell me when they can. What amount of hurt or pain do you have to be holding on to to where a person that is a caretaker, that is in a, that's in a mothering position, what amount of pain are you harboring, girlfriend? So where this person cannot call you up and have just a decent conversation. One of the things that I see with biological mothers and stepmothers that have managed to form a cohesive bond is many times they do a lot of the coordinating with the kids. The guy, the father, the man in the middle, as you know, you all know I call him. The man in the middle is, um, he's still very much necessary. He's an intricate part of this entire family. But there's something about having a conversation with another woman. She knows, as, as a mother, mother to mother, woman to woman, she knows how it is to raise children. She knows, or she can maybe empathize with what, with what you're feeling. Heck, she might be a biological mother herself, and she has to send her children to be with their father. So she understands the anxiety that comes along with sending your children away. If you can establish firm boundaries, you make it better for everybody, especially yourself. And when you're happy, your kids are happy. Happy. When you are disheveled and in pain and distraught, they can feel that the energy permeates your children and they become filled with anxiety and hurt as well. So that's one thing I can say is just get over yourself. If you are the person that I'm talking about right now, get over yourself. Today is the day that you reach out to that person and open the door, usher her in. It's very possible to re-establish any sort of relationship you have. If your relationship with the co-parent or the step-parent in your life is tumultuous, but you would like to see a change, then you have to be the change. 
It is so possible. Now, if you're one of these people that's in a chaotic situation, then there's probably not a lot of trust between all of the different parties. So the first thing that you would do is to extend the olive branch of peace. Send maybe a small note or send a text message, send an email or pick up the phone and call them and just simply say, hey, I'd like to start to establish a relationship with you based on boundaries and respect. And you just kind of got to see how they take it. I mean, if they're not receptive because you have been a hellraiser in their life for many years and you're just going to have to back off and give them time. But I guarantee that you have dropped a seed of positivity in, in the back of their mind and the more that they see that your actions are consistent by way of positivity, then maybe they'll come around. All you can do is stop prior bad behaviors. That's like, that's a major thing that you can do. You can say that you want to rebuild this relationship, but you got to stop the prior bad behaviors. If you have alienated children before, stop it. If you have talked bad about the other parent, if you've um, made threats, if you're in and out of court, find a way to make amends. And remember, trust needs to be established in these relationships. And relationships based on respect, there's a level of, of mutual trust. Be extremely strategic when you are trying to recalibrate a relationship. Just like you would when you're trying to change directions at a job or you want a promotion. You know that there's extra things that you're going to have to do. And it's the same thing when you're looking to uh, start a new type of relationship for your family. The next most important thing that you can do is apologize. Apologize. Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the pain that I've caused you. Don't say but. Don't make excuses. Just say, I'm sorry. They'll know what you're apologizing for and then be sincere about it. It's a big deal to acknowledge the pain that you have caused other people. You know, people want to feel, people want to be recognized and people want to be acknowledged. And of course, I'm not saying um, put a person in the victim role and show them how, they, how much of a victim they are. Don't do that. But just simply say, I'm sorry. That's a really important thing that you can do. Lastly, in order to see a change in your co-parenting or step-parenting relationship, you have to be good to yourself. You have to be whole and you have to focus on your own wellness. When I see people in the midst of conflict and it's never ending, I can tell who is so unhappy and who is bitter and who has not let go of a certain thing that's happened to them. I can tell because they're the ones that make the most noise and cause the most ruckus for their family. So if you want peace within your family, you have to find your own sense of personal peace. Whatever it is that's plaguing you, let it go. You may never get that apology. They may never acknowledge the pain that they have caused you, but you have to let that go and be happy. Work on yourself. Find a hobby. Go work out. Pick up another job. Go volunteer at the kids' school. There's something that you can do so that you can find your own personal peace and satisfaction. I guarantee you, people will be able to see that God glow as it permeates through you and touches everybody that you know. As a step parent, it's kind of difficult because you're expected to treat the child like your own, but then you're expected to stay in your lane and fall back when you need to. There is a healthy level of detachment that can happen with, with step parents. Now, I'm not saying detach from the child and not care. Don't do that. However, you can't be so married to what happens to these children because you legally don't have the right to make decisions as far as medical or education, signing passports. Um, you are pretty much, you're their parent's assistant. So if you look at yourself like that, this is not your child. However, you are still expected to treat this um, very valuable person in your lover's life as this very valuable person to you as well, while still carrying the understanding that there are boundaries and limitations to what you have control over. Um, being a step parent is, is, is about letting go of control letting go of a lot of control and letting go of expectations. If you come in with these heavy expectations and demands, I guarantee you, you'll be met by a door from the biological parent and from your stepchildren. So it's best to just take it easy. And if you have a great partner, if you have a great spouse, then they're ushering you into your step parenting role and they're making way. They're showing the children how you should be treated. They're showing their um, the, ch the, the child's other parent, how you should be treated as well. And they put you in a position to succeed. Well, that about wraps it up. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions you'd like for me to answer, then just drop them in the comments below or send me an email or tag me. Please take a second to like, subscribe, and share this video. I'm Family Life Coach, Naja Hall, and I will see you next time.